at KubeCon 2018 in Seattle, Washington, and we stopped by the Rancher booth. Can you tell us a little bit about the company and what you're showing here at KubeCon? Yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Shannon Williams. I'm one of the founders here at Rancher. We are an open source software company that builds Rancher, a platform for managing Kubernetes uh, across all the places it runs for an organization. So Rancher can run Kubernetes in your data center and deploy it, you know, manage multiple implementations for staging and production. But we also manage hosted Kubernetes, existing Kubernetes clusters, and across all that, we bring together a consistent management plan. So we manage users and access control policies. We federate all of your security policies for how you want people to run containers in an organization. And we give end users and the developers that use Kubernetes a really rich set of tooling from the cloud native ecosystem that are pre-integrated, deployed really easily, like Prometheus and Fluent D and um, Service Mesh, so that you can quickly launch services, launch applications, you know, share Helm charts, and collaborate to use cloud native technologies more effectively and to you know, take Kubernetes everywhere, use it as a consistent implementation platform. And so what specific problems do you solve in the, for Kubernetes? Well, it's not so much about solving problems for Kubernetes. Kubernetes itself is this amazing engine. It's an engine that runs very well on any infrastructure. And with containers, you know, giving us this really lightweight way of building and deploying applications, for, for most organizations, uh, you know, where they start to see value in using Rancher is, as they need a control plane, as they need something that exists beyond just a single Kubernetes cluster, but maybe to manage Kubernetes across an organization. So a lot of a lot of larger companies are running Kubernetes now in in their data center, they're running in the, in the cloud, and you know they could manage each of those independently, like you know it, it, a Kubernetes cluster here run by one team, another one there. But there's a lot of benefits to bringing together the management of Kubernetes under a single platform. And Rancher being open source, it's a really popular way to not just set up and deploy and sort of upgrade Kubernetes, but rather define you know, how authorization is going to work and define pod security policies and do that centrally and then push it out. It also makes delegated administration just a dream. So I can authorize a user to run a cluster, I can give them control over creating namespaces, but still maybe manage the infrastructure myself, add nodes to the cluster, scale things. And on top of that then, the, the, the real problem that I think companies do run into that, that Rancher helps a lot with is the onboarding of users to Kubernetes. So Rancher provides a full user interface and a really awesome integrated set of tools that would otherwise you'd need to really assemble yourself, maintain, upgrade, and manage. Rancher puts those into a tools catalog that you can simply launch. So Prometheus is a pretty good example. You can come in, turn on Prometheus for a cluster, and it will automatically deploy everything. It'll allow you to configure how long you're going to store the uh, metrics and data. And then you know any team that launches applications in a namespace on that cluster will get uh, their own stats, their own data exposed to them. But they won't see other, you know someone else's namespace. So, we isolate things globally. Everything we build is about multi-tenancy and delegated administration so that Kubernetes itself feels like a platform. It feels like a service that runs everywhere. So whether it's EKS and GKE in the cloud or I build my own cluster in the cloud, I'm able to very quickly apply policies. And if you could see into the future, where do you see this industry going over the next 12, 18 months? Wow, I think we are, um, you know, we've seen, and if we look backwards, we've seen massive adoption growth. I mean, what's really exciting right now is that the CNCF as an organization is bringing on more and more projects that add value in very specific areas. Um, I think we're going to see that continue. I think we're going to see new projects in a lot of areas around storage, new projects in areas around observability, new projects around service mesh, all coming in. But I do think there's also going to be some consolidation, some you know, deeper integration between projects. One of the, the challenges is, you know, right now, almost everyone who gets into the Kubernetes ecosystem is you know, kind of building their own car. I think tools like Rancher that provide kind of a pre-integrated, pre-built car um, that just runs out of the garage is, are really going to make it a lot easier for a lot more people to take this technology and, and move really quickly for it. I mean, by doing all that in open source software, I think there's very little um, you know, keeping people from just diving in. So I would look forward 12, 18 months and expect to see, you know, an even bigger ecosystem of users, um, more and more organizations leveraging these pieces of technology and using them to improve how they solve problems like software distribution or edge computing 
or data analytics. And I think if we come back to KubeCon next year, we're going to see more stories from organizations about the impact Kubernetes is having, about the ability to run any workload anywhere and how they're able to sort of optimize their business around new opportunities that, that maybe require them to be you know, very dynamic and responding to customer needs. So that's, that feels to me where we're heading. Right. Um, would it be possible for us to take a look at the product, maybe get a demo? Yeah, I would love to give you a demo. I'd love to show you Rancher. So what are you going to show us? So this is Rancher. Rancher is an open source project. We're going to demo you the user interface for Rancher. Great. So I've got a Rancher environment here that's running in the cloud. Uh, the Rancher management server really is just a container. You can start it and run it anywhere. Um, but once you set it up, the first thing you'll do with it is you'll begin to create some Kubernetes clusters. So you can create a Kubernetes cluster just about anywhere. If you want to use a hosted Kubernetes cluster like Google GKE or Amazon EKS, you'll provide some credentials, you know, decide who's going to be able to access that cluster, and launch it. And you'll use your credentials in that cloud provider to authorize um, you to add infrastructure and begin to scale it up. But you can also import an existing cluster if I want to use Rancher to just manage something maybe that I've created with KubeSpray or COPS or some other provisioning tool. You can build infrastructure in any cloud or vSphere or anywhere, and Rancher can implement Kubernetes directly on top of that as well. So if I choose to do that, I would provide, use my credentials to kind of configure and deploy Kubernetes. So let's look at Amazon for a second. If I'm, if I'm doing that, what I would do is choose, again, I'd give the group, a, you know, give this cluster a name. I'll just call this the VM blog cluster. And I would then sort of configure who's going to be able to access it. If I've connected this to an authorization system like our, like my Active Directory, I'd be able to see the groups that are available, you know, set them up with different ownership privileges. Then from here, I would go in and actually configure the Kubernetes cluster I wanted to deploy. So here you can see I have some options. In Amazon, it, it knows I want to run with probably the Amazon Cloud Provider. I can choose from different versions of Kubernetes. And, uh, and configure that. I can also go a lot deeper if I want to set up options on things like the ingress operations or the type of network I want to deploy. And all of this is kind of cube clusters as, um, as code. So I can just define this in Git, launch it from a file, and once I've created it, it's going to tell this rancher how to build my Kubernetes cluster, what kind of services I want to deploy. Um, I then go create some nodes. So in this case, I'm going to create some nodes in Amazon. I would choose, you know, for example, I want to run my etcd uh, service as part of this, you know, maybe run three etcd nodes to get Quorum, and then add another group of nodes that will be my control plane. Um, and each time I'm going to sort of use different templates, and this way we can understand how to create hosts and what kind of hosts we want to create, so that when we later get into scaling the cluster or automatically adding infrastructure to do horizontal scaling, we can easily do that by just adding more hosts. So we create these, temp these services using our Amazon credentials. And pretty quickly, we have a Kubernetes cluster running. So I'm going to jump back here and show you a couple clusters I created before, uh, a demo cluster and a local cluster. And each cluster is made up of a number of hosts, and those are then running workloads. So here you can see the nodes that run in my different demo and my different clusters that I've created. And I can do a lot at the cluster level. So here, um, this is the demo cluster I have, and I can see how my capacity looks like. I've turned on Prometheus already in the tooling session under monitoring. And so you can see that Grafana is already integrated into the Rancher UI. And that means that we're using Prometheus to capture a whole bunch of time series metrics about the service. Here I can, whoops, let's go back in here to the cluster. Um, here I can kind of see what's going on within you know, individual hosts. I can look at the overall capacity of my cluster, what utilization looks like and you know, scroll down and see more of that. I can also configure things like storage classes and volumes. I can manage catalogs for these clusters. I can implement things like alerting to respond to issues when I lose infrastructure. And eventually, as a user, I'll want to come in and start to manage projects or namespaces. So once I have a Kubernetes environment up and running, I want to authorize teams to deploy their applications. So when I get into a project, this is where, as a user, I manage my workloads. So I have a workload deployed here, but I can, at any point, start deploying, either directly using Kubernetes' API or CLI, or from the Rancher UI, I can build 
all of my YAML files and describe exactly the type of workload I want to run. So let's say I just want to run a, a simple application and I need to make it a daemon set. I'll just say that I want to run one pod everywhere. I can choose the namespace or create a namespace that I'm going to run this in and I can choose the image that I want to use to provision it. Once I've done that, it's going to give me a lot of the different options for how I want to provision it, how, what kind of scheduling policies I want to set, how do I want to configure health checks. And, and one thing that makes Xantra really easy is it really exposes to you the options you have in each of these areas. So I would choose what I want to do, deploy it. I could then see the load balancers I've created. I can manage all my service discovery and endpoints. Um, I'm able to manage volumes that have been created, see even pipelines. So if I want to configure my repositories to um, you know, connect to a Git repo, I can do set this up and Rancher has built-in CI to do my builds and deployments directly. So very easy to kind of choose how to config and deploy uh, CI here from things like GitLab, Bitbucket, or GitHub. So with Rancher, it's really about you know, building clusters, setting up you know, global policies, sharing things like Helm charts, and implementing global you know, capabilities like Prometheus and Fluentd in really easy ways. And then bringing all that together into a platform that's multi-tenant, is geared for teams who want to you know, grow their adoption of Kubernetes really quickly and train people on how to use this technology. Well, great. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with VM Blog, and we hope you have a great show. Yeah, thanks, Brian. It's always great to see you here.